So Christianity is a pretty big religion and a lot of people tend to believe in God and the Bible. But have you ever thought of disproving Christianity? There's people who believe the Bible is false and they give their reasons why. But if you wanted to take a shortcut in destroying the Christian faith, the first thing you'd have to do is prove that Jesus Christ's resurrection was false. The resurrection of Jesus was the central truth of Christianity, and even Paul, a New Testament writer for many books of the Bible, says in 1 Corinthians 15, 17, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. The word futile here means worthless and unprofitable, meaning if anyone disproved the resurrection, it would result in disproving the faith of all Christians. Their faith would be worthless. But is it possible to disprove the resurrection? Christians actually claim that Jesus died and that he rose again from the dead. Let's check out some alternative theories to see if they can stand the test and prove Christianity to be false and worthless. So maybe someone stole the body then. That would make sense. Jesus didn't really come back from the dead. Someone took the body. So did the Romans steal the body? First off, the Romans would have no reason to steal Christ's body. Their main motive was to keep the Jews at bay and in control. They sought to keep peace in Palestine. Jesus' missing body caused all sorts of commotions that could have easily been avoided if the Romans just uncovered the body they stole. So how about the Jewish religious leaders? They could have stole it. Well, these leaders would have no motive in stealing the body since that would only stir up the Christian movement. They killed Jesus to shut him up so why would they steal his body? Jesus' disciples were preaching saying, Jesus is risen. If the religious leaders had the body, they could have said, we have his body, he didn't really rise again and be quiet. If that happened, Christianity would have stopped then and there. But you also have Jesus' disciples and followers. It was them, they stole the body. But this doesn't make sense either. History tells us that all of Jesus' disciples except Judas Iscariot and John died for their faith. It was believed John died of old age and Judas, well, he was hanging around. So if Jesus' body really was stolen by his disciples, then why would these other 10 men die horrible deaths for their faith? Some were crucified, stabbed, hung, beheaded. One had his head clubbed. Some were stoned. I know they weren't high. Others were whipped, and someone was even dragged around the city until his body was in pieces. So, if these disciples all died for this resurrected Jesus, why would they all be willing to die for a lie? It would make more sense for them to save themselves. On top of that, after Jesus died, all the cowardly disciples were hiding because they were all freaked out about dying too. They were in no condition to fight the Roman soldiers that were, by the way, guarding the body of Jesus. So since Jesus' body couldn't have been stolen, there has to be another explanation. Let's look at the wrong tomb theory. This theory says that the woman who reported the body missing mistakenly went to the wrong tomb that morning. They freaked out and were all like, Jesus rose again. Thus, Christianity was born. But this wouldn't make much sense because the Roman guards protecting Jesus' body would have produced the body of Jesus before Christianity became a big deal. How about the hallucination theory? Those crazy Christians were all hallucinating, those religious nuts. This theory claims that the appearances of Jesus after the resurrection were either illusions or hallucinations. But this theory is contrary to psychological principles governing the occurrence of hallucinations. According to 1 Corinthians 15, 6, Jesus appeared to over 500 people at one time. It's not credible to think that 500 people all saw the same hallucination and then some were willing to die for it. And if they were hallucinating, then Jesus' body would have still been there and then those possessing it would have produced it. Well, maybe it's the swoon theory. The swoon theory states that Jesus never died. He merely fainted from exhaustion and loss of blood. Everyone thought he was dead, but later he resuscitated and the disciples thought it to be a resurrection. But in Mark 15, 44, it states that a centurion checked to see if Jesus was dead. A centurion was a Roman soldier who was in charge of 100 other soldiers. He was a leader in the great and all-powerful Roman Empire who was trained to kill and subdue all who opposed Rome. Crucifixion was capital punishment, and if the soldier was wrong in determining if Jesus was dead, the soldier would have severe consequences. Mistakes weren't allowed. Jesus did die, and he was even stabbed with a spear up his side to guarantee his death. There's also the moved body theory, which says that the body was moved by the authorities to a different tomb. But that doesn't make any sense either. If the authorities had the body in their possession or knew where it was, why didn't they explain that they took it? This was a weak theory. Next. The relocated body theory. 
This one says that the tomb of Jesus was empty, not because he resurrected, but because the body was simply relocated. Thus, the disciples mistakenly believed that he was resurrected. This relocation hypothesis gained support from the fact that reburial was common in ancient Palestine. However, Jewish tradition defers. Jewish tradition was to bury a body for one year, and then after the flesh deteriorated and only the bones remained, they would then remove the bones and place them in an ossuary. But the main problem for the relocation of the body of Jesus is the complete lack of historical support, either in biblical or non-biblical sources. And it's important to note that the empty tomb didn't convince any of the disciples that Jesus rose again, except maybe John. It was the appearance of Jesus that transformed the weenie disciples into brave evangelists willing to die for their faith. And the last popular alternative to the resurrection is the copycat theory, which says nothing in Christianity is original. Jesus was just another dying and rising god in the tradition of Osiris, Mithras, Adonis, and Dionysus. There's plenty of other gods, religious figures, and mythology guys that died and rose again. But the only problem with this view is that Jesus of Nazareth actually ate, slept, performed miracles, died, and returned to life. All of these accounts are supported by a reliable historical record. In contrast, the dying and rising gods of the mystery religions were timeless myths repeated annually with the changing seasons. So, after looking at all these other theories, it looks like Christians have some solid evidence that Jesus not only existed, but died and rose again. And if he did rise again from the dead, then it forces us to really consider Christianity. Rising from the dead after three days is impossible. He was beat up to the point where he was unrecognizable, whipped with his back torn open to where you can see his spine and bowels, and then he was nailed to a cross. You see, if you want to disprove Christianity, you have to answer to Jesus' resurrection. This isn't something you can dismiss and sweep under the rug, because if Jesus did rise from the dead, then he is who he claimed to be, and he claimed to be God. He claimed to be the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one can come to the Father except by him. Jesus claimed to be God and then proved it through his resurrection. We all sinned, messed up, and our penalty was death and separation from God. But Jesus died on the cross for our sin to take our punishment, and he rose again so he can be the bridge between man and God. You see, if you're not a Christian, you have to make a choice. Either try to disprove Christianity by thinking of some other possibility, or know that Jesus really did die and rise from the dead. Romans 10.9 Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved.